90%, that's the percentage of startups that fail. You have a better chance of surviving a plane crash than watching your new business survive. But what if you could tilt the odds in your favor? What if you could avoid the mistakes that drag so many businesses under? How big of an advantage would you really have? In this video, I'm sharing the three biggest challenges that I faced while building my seven-figure business as a software engineer and how overcoming these challenges turned everything around. Two and a half years ago, I was working 16-hour days, juggling non-stop client calls, and honestly questioning if I'd even be able to cover my expenses. And fast forward to today, and that very same business has crossed $7 million in annually recurring revenue. But of course, this all didn't happen overnight. I nearly lost it all by hitting three hidden landmines. And with that, let's move on to the first landmine. Now, people often think that client acquisition is the hardest part of running a business. But if your offer solves a real problem, getting clients can actually be a lot simpler than you'd expect because people need what you're providing. The real challenge actually comes after you close your clients. And I learned this the hard way when I took on one of my very first big clients at AB Analytics. You see, this client was a local retail store that wanted to branch out into e-commerce. They were 100% brick and mortar, but they saw the online market exploding and they wanted a piece of the action. Now, my main objective was to help them unify their data. That included website visits, emails, and social media basically the entire customer journey so that they could make smarter decisions about how to grow online. And on the surface, it looked pretty straightforward. I mean, collect the data, set up the analytics, and show them where their sales were coming from, as well as other insights into the customer journey. And I was really excited because I thought, okay, this is gonna be easy money. Two months max, and I'll have another success story under my belt. So I signed on, no questions asked, and promised results. But once I lifted the hood, I saw a very huge problem. Their data was completely messed up. Some payments were tracked in random Excel sheets. Some cash transactions weren't even logged at all. And worst of all, they had zero real-time tracking. And on top of everything, nobody on their team was on the same page about how to record purchases. They had a POS system, but they weren't properly using it. It was simply utter chaos. And suddenly, my two months project stretched into six months. I had to rebuild their entire data pipeline from scratch, which pretty much involved choosing the right tools, cleaning the years of messy records that they had, and showing their staff how to properly record new sales. And at the end of the day, I ended up losing money on this deal because it ate up more of my time and resources than I ever planned for. And instead of them paying me, it pretty much turned into me paying them to basically get their system fixed. But what did I actually learn from this? Well, I realized that I had to do proper due diligence before saying yes to any new client. This means that I set up a process of asking questions and checking under the hood right from the start. If let's say a client's data was super messy, I could either charge more to cover the extra work or decide that it simply wasn't worth the headache and pass on the opportunity. And now when I bring somebody on, I'm not blindsided and I can give them a realistic timeline that accounts for possible hurdles. And I only do business with those that I can genuinely help. So if you're in any type of business, remember, the real work often starts after you sign a contract. Make sure you know exactly what you're getting yourself into, because if not, you risk losing money, time, and of course, your sanity. For the second landmine, we're gonna jump back in time to December 1st, 1913. That's the day that Henry Ford introduced his assembly line, revolutionizing car production by cutting build time from just 12 hours down to only 90 minutes. Now, Ford's genius wasn't in actually inventing cars. It was in creating a repeatable system. Because when a task is broken down into clear steps, each worker knows exactly what to do, so the whole operation runs faster and more consistently. But you might be wondering, what does this have to do with your business, Bago? And at first, nothing, because I had no system. In my early days, I treated every single new client as a special case. I was pretty much doing growth consulting for every single random small business in totally different niches in my area. And I never wrote down the steps that I took or created a blueprint that I could easily follow for the next project. Everything lived in my head. So even if I got a great result, like helping a client 5x their business, I wouldn't be able to replicate it easily for another client. It was all guesswork the second time around. This chaos might be fine if you only have one or two clients, but once I started growing, it completely crushed me. I couldn't hire anyone to help 
because there was nothing to train them on. It was just do it how I do it, which was pretty much impossible to explain to new hires thoroughly without me having to handhold every single step of the way, wasting my time. And if I forgot something or I got sick, then the entire project would stall. So what I learned from this and how did I exactly fix it? Well, I took a page out of Henry Ford's book and built my own quote unquote assembly line. Or in other words, I created standard operating procedures known as SOPs. So I sat down and it took me a decent amount of time and wrote down every single step of my process in detail. So starting all the way from how to gather requirements, how to kick off engagements, where to store files, especially if it was, you know, high security files, what's 20% of the tasks to focus on to move the needle with each client, how to onboard a client from the first email down to the last wrap up call. I documented everything. I also wrote down any templates that I used like emails for new clients or instructions for analyzing their sales funnel or just their entire data as a whole. And at first, don't get me wrong, this felt like a chore, but once it was done, everything clicked and fell into place. Projects got done way faster because nobody had to guess what to do next. Quality improved because each step was now consistent and repeatable. Hiring new people became way easier because I could say just check the SOP and they had a clear guide as to what to do and how to do it. And of course, scaling finally became possible because I wasn't stuck doing every single task myself. It was just like Ford's assembly line, maybe not for building cars, but for my actual services. Repeating the same process freed me to think more about strategy instead of constantly reinventing the wheel. Now, when it comes to the third landmine, this one hit my bank account directly. So early on, I charged very little for my services because I thought, okay, I just need to land any client I can just to make money out of it and then I can worry about the long-term stuff later. And this works in the short term, you'll get deals, but it can trap you in a cycle of 16 hour days for very tiny profit. And the truth was that my work often had a very long-term impact on my clients. Let's say I wrap up a two month engagement and walk away only for them to see huge gains a few months later, sometimes as high as even 10x growth. It was like I had built them a water well that would provide fresh water indefinitely, yet I was only charging them for the first bucket of water that I handed over. And did I realize this at first? No, I was way too busy hustling and just trying to get the next client, trying to keep my business afloat and feeling like I had to take every single job that came my way. But once my clients started telling me how they saw their revenue explode, thanks to my analytic setups, it hit me. I was giving away massive long-term value, but only getting paid for a fraction of it. It was as if I was still in the employee mindset as an entrepreneur. So how did I actually fix this and what did I learn from it? Well, I switched to what I call a value-based pricing model. Instead of setting a flat fee that was basically tied to how many hours I worked, I started charging based on the lasting impact my service would have on the client's business. So if a client could reasonably expect to multiply the revenue, I made sure that my price reflected a fair share of that gain. And don't get me wrong, I was nervous. I thought, what if nobody wanted to pay more? But what ended up happening was something completely different that I didn't expect. Serious clients understood that if they invest in a solution that helps them earn far more money down the road, it's only natural that it will be worth the cost. In fact, this change ended up filtering out many people who only wanted something quick and cheap leaving me with clients who actually valued my work and could see the return, which made working with them 10 times easier and better. And once I made the switch, everything about my business improved. I worked fewer hours and made more money at the same time, which let me hire a team and devote more attention to quality and new ideas. My clients were happy because they recognized that I was now sharing in the risk with them, which meant that if they didn't see results, I also wouldn't see results and my service wouldn't make sense to them, but if they did see results, then I would also see results. It was a win-win for both sides. And these three landmines, fulfillment nightmares, lack of SOPs and underpricing, nearly took me out of the game. But learning how to actually navigate them changed my business from a stressful day-to-day -day grind to a solid growing company that broke seven figures. Now, when it comes to fulfillment problems, you need to make sure that you know what you're walking yourself into by doing some serious due diligence before you sign a contract. Only help those that you can genuinely help. Second thing, lack of SOWs. You need to document your processes like Henry Ford did with the assembly line. This is how you actually maintain quality, reduce chaos, and scale. And last but not least, underpricing. Do not just charge for your time. 
That's very employee mindset to have. Charge for the ongoing impact that you actually deliver. If you build somebody a well, don't just get paid for that first bucket of water. Now, these solutions might seem obvious to you in hindsight, but it took me a lot of trial and error to actually figure them out. And if you'll nail these three parts of your business, you'll be way ahead of most entrepreneurs and software engineers and far less likely to become another failure statistic. But of course, as you probably guessed, these three landmines aren't the only lessons that I learned on my journey to seven figures. If you want the full playbook, the complete framework that turned a scrappy startup into a profitable seven figure business, then you need to watch this video next. As always, thank you for watching and have a good one.